Okay, everyone, welcome back to um, Functional Groups, which is Chapter 11, Week 11, and we're calling this one Part 2. All right, so we're going to begin by recalling something from our Part 1 video PowerPoint. Recall that when we discussed organic molecules and their specifics, we said that organic molecules have carbon atoms, which are bonded with four bonds in order to get their octet. Well, the carbon atoms, we found out, bond with mostly hydrogen and other carbon atoms but sometimes we said we also find oxygens, nitrogens, and sulfur atoms, as well as halogens, the fluorine, chlorine, and bromine, as part of the organic molecule. Which brings us to what are called functional groups in organic chemistry. So what are they? Functional groups are a characteristic feature of the organic molecule. And this characteristic feature, this functional group, causes the organic molecule to behave in a predictable way. Functional groups they're composed of either an atom, a single atom, or a group of atoms. These either single atoms or a group of atoms, they will replace a hydrogen atom in the corresponding alkane. And functional groups, these functional groups, these um, single atoms or small groups of atoms that impart a behavior on the organic molecule are a way that we use as organic chemists to classify organic compounds. Functional groups, um, often called families of compounds, uh, also you'll hear that term. All right, so let's look at some of these functional groups. And it turns out that in our discussion of hydrocarbons, we've actually, in fact, already been introduced to a couple of the functional groups. So let's begin with them. They are the alkenes and the alkynes. Recall that alkenes contain a double bond between adjacent carbon atoms. Here's our structure. We saw this before in our previous PowerPoint. All right, so we have a carbon atom and a carbon atom, all right? And the two carbon atoms are doubly bonded to one another. Each carbon still has four bonds to it. Remember, that was a prerequisite for organic compounds. Every carbon will have four bonds. Alkyne, right, so there it is. Let's make sure that, that you see it, okay, the carbon-carbon double bond. When you find a carbon-carbon double bond, at least one in a compound, you are talking about the alkene family of compounds. Alkynes, recall, contain a carbon-carbon triple bond. There we go. There is a model of an alkyne, and you see very clearly here a carbon-carbon triple bond. Right. Again, each carbon in this alkyne has four bonds, three to another carbon, one to a hydrogen, three to another carbon, and one to a hydrogen. Right. So be able to pick out triple bonds in compounds. When you see a triple bond between two carbon atoms, you know you're talking about the alkyne functional group or the alkyne family. All right, let's head to another couple of functional groups. And what I've done in the PowerPoint is to group them together um, 
according to similarities. All right. So the alcohols and ethers are the next two functional groups. Alcohols. The alcohol family consists of compounds that contain a hydroxyl functional group. What's a hydroxyl functional group? It is an oxygen bonded to a hydrogen, an OH as we call it. So remember what we said, functional groups are going to take the place of a hydrogen that has been bonded to a carbon and an alkane. All right, so that's what that means. That's why we, we draw it like that, uh, a dash. That's a bond that's going to be to a carbon atom. Let's look at a, a model of an alcohol atom or an alcohol molecule. All right, so carbon atom, carbon atom. So this one, this carbon atom is a CH3, bonded, singly bonded to another carbon atom. Okay, and there's a hydrogen, a hydrogen. And what do we see here? We see an OH, a hydroxyl group. So that is an alcohol. Whenever you see a hydroxyl group bonded to a carbon. An ether. In an ether, an oxygen atom is bonded to two carbon atoms. So we get a C bonded to an oxygen bonded to a carbon. Right? So in other words, the oxygen is sandwiched between two carbon atoms. Let's look at an actual model of a compound. Here we go. This is an ether. We see two carbon atoms, each with three hydrogens attached. So they need one more bond apiece, and each one is bonded to that oxygen. The oxygen is sandwiched between two carbon atoms. Whenever you see an oxygen sandwiched between two carbon atoms, you know you're talking about the ether functional group. The next two functional groups, aldehydes and ketones. Again, look for the similarities in them. All right. An aldehyde contains what's called a carbonyl group. A carbonyl group is a carbon atom that is doubly bonded to an oxygen atom. This, when we see that, that's a carbonyl group. So an aldehyde contains a carbonyl group, which um, is a carbon atom, like we said, with a, a double bond to an oxygen atom. So there it is, okay? There is our aldehyde, okay? So here's a carbon with three hydrogens attached. It's bonded to a carbon, and that carbon's bonded to a hydrogen, and in addition, it is doubly bonded to an oxygen, okay? So we see this carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen, and then a hydrogen. All right, so there is the feature that you're looking for in an aldehyde, the carbonyl group. Okay, and attached to that carbonyl, we have a hydrogen on one side and a carbon on the other. So that's important, an important feature. In a ketone, we also have a carbonyl group. Okay, it contains a carbonyl group, but the carbon of the carbonyl group is attached to two other carbons. All right, so here's a ketone. Let's see, here is our carbonyl group, carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen. There's our carbonyl. We have the same thing here in the aldehyde, but notice the difference. In the aldehyde, our carbonyl carbon is bonded to a carbon on one side and a hydrogen on the other. In a ketone, that carbonyl carbon is bonded to a carbon on both sides. So there it is. There's the feature that we look for, the distinguishing feature of a ketone, a carbonyl, 
and on one side it's bonded to a carbon and on the other side it is also bonded to a carbon. All right, our next set, again, because there's similarities, um, are the carboxylic acids and the esters. Carboxylic acids contain what we call as organic chemists a carboxyl group. Our carboxyl group, um, it is a carbonyl group, so C, carbon doubly bonded to an oxygen, which is also attached to a hydroxyl group. Hydroxyl, remember, is an OH group. So here is a carboxyl group, a carbonyl. There's our carbonyl C double bond O. And it's also attached to a hydroxyl group. So two features. This is known as a carboxyl group. So that's what we're looking for. That's the distinguishing feature of a carboxylic acid. Let's look at a molecule, a model of a carboxylic acid. So we look at this and we see, oh, there it is. My eyes immediately drawn to the carbonyl group right here. And then we look at it in more detail and we see we have it bonded to a hydroxyl group. So that's a carboxyl group, the whole thing. And the presence of that carboxyl group means we have a carboxylic acid. All right, so what about the ester? Look for the similarities. An ester also contains a, uh, it contains a carboxyl group between carbon atoms. So here's an ester, right? So here we have a carbonyl, okay, carbonyl, C double bond O. And remember what that carboxyl group had, it had an OH. Well, we see the O here, the oxygen, okay, of the hydroxyl, but instead of the hydrogen, we have a carbon. All right, so it's a carboxyl group between two carbon atoms. Here's carbon atom one, here's carbon atom two. So let's box in the distinguishing feature. There it is, a carboxyl group, right, sandwiched between um, two carbons, carbon one, carbon two, an ester. Our last two functional groups, the amines and the amides. And again, we put them together because they have similarities. In amines, the functional group is a nitrogen atom. Remember, nitrogen is in group five of the periodic table. So in order to get that full uh, octet, it forms three bonds. Remember, it has a lone pair. It's not always uh, shown. You have to remember that it is, in fact, there. I don't know if I can make it um, big enough. Let's see. Let's get a bigger, a bigger pen here. Possibly. Let's see. Let's do this. Let's see if we can do it. Let's say big and big. So those are our, our lone pair of electrons there. Okay. All right. Um, they're there, even though they're not shown. Okay. So with three bonds, a nitrogen has got a full octet. So in amines, that's what we see when we see a nitrogen. Um, so that nitrogen, here it is right here. Okay. Again, it's got to have three bonds to it. So in order to be an organic compound, we have to have at least one bond to a carbon. So here's our nitrogen. One bond is to a carbon of some sort. All right. And then that means with only two more bonds to go, we would have two hydrogens as we see there. OK. Well, we could have two carbon atoms bonded to our nitrogen. 
All right, so this is another possibility. Here's our nitrogen. Okay, remember nitrogen has three bonds to it. All right, so if two of them are carbon atoms, that means it only has one hydrogen attached. Um, amines, it turns out, can also have three carbon atoms attached to them. So let's see if I can uh, draw one with my crappy drawing here. Let's say we could have a nitrogen, right, and three methyl groups, okay, so three carbons attached to it, one, two, three, okay, and it would have its lone pair there, okay. Alrighty, so that's an amine, right, and it could be one of three different types, okay. It could be a nitrogen with one carbon attached, right, and two hydrogens, a nitrogen with two carbons attached, one hydrogen, or a nitrogen with three carbon groups attached, and no hydrogens. All right, how about the amides? Well, in amides, the hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid, remember the carboxylic acid? It has a carbonyl and a hydroxyl group attached, right, to that carbonyl. Well, imagine that, imagine the carboxylic acid and that uh, hydroxyl group of the carboxylic acid being replaced by a nitrogen group, okay? So here would be an example, okay? Right? Here is our carbonyl. Let's imagine that was from a carboxylic acid, right? The hydroxyl group is gone, and in its place, we see a nitrogen with two hydrogens attached. Okay. Remember, the nitrogen always has three bonds. So if one's to the carbon, then it has two hydrogens. Okay. So that is the distinguishing feature there. All right. The carbonyl uh, of the carboxylic acid with the hydroxyl group replaced with um, a nitrogen group. All right. So here again are the distinguishing features of the amines right that nitrogen with hydrogens attached right and carbons all right so this last slide here what i've done is to take all of those functional groups that we just talked about and put them together in one place for you all right so um, you can study them and become familiar with them. You have to be able to recognize them in a compound, right? And you also have to be able to draw the functional group, all right? So uh, just to give you a rundown again, we looked at alkenes. Um, the alkene, the functional group, is a carbon-carbon double bond. The alkyne, what's the functional group? What's the small group of atoms that distinguish it? Well, it's the carbon-carbon triple bond. Let's add in there, remember we said we could have halogens, all right? If we have halogens attached, we call them haloalkanes, right? Those are fairly easy, all right? And then what did we see? We saw the alcohol, the, the sting, distinguishing mark, the functional group is a collection of two atoms, the hydroxyl group, the ether, an oxygen sandwiched between two carbons. The aldehyde has the carbonyl, which has is, is bonded to a carbon on one side and a hydrogen on the other. The ketone, very similar, right? It has that carbonyl, but no hydrogen, right? It's got a carbon on this side and a carbon group on this side. Carboxylic acid, what's the distinguishing feature? There it is the par carboxyl group, the carbonyl, and attached to that carbonyl is a hydroxyl group. Ester is very similar. All right, you can see it a little bit better here. All right, there's the carbonyl. We had a hydroxyl group, but we took off the hydrogen, and over on this side, we've got some sort of a carbon group. So a carbon here, and a carbon group there. An amine, right? A nitrogen with at least one bond to a carbon, right? At least one, if not three, okay? And the amide, it's, um, it's sort of a combination of your carboxylic acid 
and your amine. Right? You have your carbonyl, right? just like your carboxylic acid had, but let's envision taking off that hydroxyl group and putting amine in an amine, a nitrogen in its place. And again, we're always thinking that nitrogen only has three bonds. Okay. Alrighty, so those are the functional groups that you are responsible for being able to recognize, name, um, etc. Right? There's plenty of, of problems in the textbook, and we'll, we'll just run through one here just to, to see how well you add up. All right, we'll do one functional group practice problem. Right? So for this problem, you're going to classify each of the following as, and here they're giving you a choice, it's, it's any of the ones we just talked about, alcohol, ether, aldehyde, ketone, carboxylic acid, ester, amine, or an amide. All right, so any of the ones that we just uh, spoke about earlier. Okay, so let's give them to you um, one at a time, and then we'll give you a little bit of time to to look at them so you're looking for distinguishing features okay no yelling it out okay we don't want everybody to hear so write it down okay good whoops that one came a little fast all right number two here's number two take a good look at it find the distinguishing uh, single atom or group of atoms Number three, I think I have five of them here, and there's four and five, okay, all righty, let's, uh, let's see how well you did, all right, so if you didn't get them as fast, uh, because I'm going to go on to the next slide here, but if it took you a little bit of time, you had to look back at your notes, that's okay. All right. Um, practice makes perfect. You have to do a lot of them. Make flashcards. Best thing you can do. All right. Keep flipping them over. Okay. So the answers. There we go. All right. That very first one. All right. Distinguishing feature. We see the hydroxyl group. Um, and it's bonded to a carbon. Uh, and if you don't believe that it is, then draw the expanded structure. Okay, expand it out, and you will see that it's bonded to a carbon, not those two hydrogens, right? Who's the distinguishing feature here? Well, there it is. It's the oxygen sandwiched between two carbon atoms. That's our ether. Here we see a nitrogen. That's bonded to carbon and two hydrogens, so that's an amine. In number four, oh, there it is. There's that carboxyl group, carbonyl, right? Bonded to a hydroxyl group. And then our last one, we see the carbonyl. It's not bonded to a hydroxyl. It's got the oxygen there. So it's sandwiched between two carbons. And so we have an ester. All right, again, uh, practice makes perfect. There's plenty of problems at the end of the chapter and also, I think, embedded in it. All righty. Um, so the last topic of this particular slideshow is isomers. Now, we talked a little bit about them in uh, part one, but we need to look at them in just a little bit more detail, okay, and make sure that you understand them in light of our discussion on functional groups. All right, so um, we defined isomers in the previous slideshow. Isomers are organic compounds that have the same chemical formula, but a different structure, okay? Same chemical formula, but a different structure. Sort of like the two figures on the slide. So what does that mean? That means that isomers are going to have the same molecular formula. But because they have a different structure, they're not going to be the same compounds, so they're likely to have different physical 
and chemical properties. There are two general types of isomers that you have to be familiar with. Isomers can be structural in nature or geometric. And in our last slideshow, part one, we looked in detail at the geometric isomers. We want to come back and we're going to look at both of them again. We'll review geometric, but we really have to be familiar with what it means to be a structural isomer also. All right, so types of isomers. Let's begin with the structural isomers. Structural isomers are going to occur when atoms within a molecule are arranged in different orders. Just like those two figures on our screen, right on our intro screen on isomers. There are in fact three types of structural isomers that you need to be familiar with. The very first type of structural isomer that you might encounter would be chain isomers or chain isomerism. What does this mean? What is chain isomerism? Well, chain isomers or chain isomerisms arise due to different arrangements of your carbon atoms in a compound. And these different arrangements lead to linear and or branched chains. Chain isomers, they're going to have the same molecular formula, but their chains are going to be different. In other words, one might be straight chain, right? Normal, all right? Linear, as we often say. And the other one might be branched. An example, two compounds. Okay, this particular one here, all right? First one is linear. It's a linear arrangement of four carbons. In our second compound, notice we still have four carbons, but it's not a linear arrangement, right? It's branched, okay? Three carbons and then one branch give us us four. Both of these have the same molecular formula. They're both C4H10, meaning they're alkanes, right? Um, but they're not the same compound. I right? clearly look at them and say this one's linear, this one's branched. Um, if you're in doubt as to whether they're the same compound, name them. All right. This is butane. All right. Four carbons in a row, butane. Longest continuous carbon chain in the second one, three. It's a propane. And it has a branch. The branch is a methyl group. Where is it? Second carbon. It's 2-methylpropane. If they have different names, well, they're different compounds, okay? So they're going to have different melting points, boiling points, etc., okay? Although their chemical properties are probably going to be very similar because they're alkenes. All right, so chain isomerism. All right. Continuing with our types of structural isomers, second type is what we call positional isomer, positional isomerism. Positional isomers arise due to different positions of a substituent, a side chain, a branch, or a functional group, or a double bond or a triple bond on the parent chain. Example. Let's look at these two chloroalkanes. Okay. We notice that both of these have the same molecular formula. Same molecular formula, C3H7Cl, but they're not the same compound. Okay. If we name them, okay. 
we have two different names. In this first one, our chlorine is a substituent on the number one carbon. And we call it one chloropropane. In our second compound, where's that chlorine? It's not on the first carbon, it's on the second carbon. So this is two chloropropane. Different name, different compound. This is an example. They are structural isomers, but what kind in particular? Positional isomerism. They differ in the position of a substituent of functional group. Okay. Alrighty. And let's go on to our third type of structural isomer. The third type is known as functional isomers, functional isomerism. Functional isomers arise due to the presence of different functional groups in a molecule. Functional isomers are going to have, again, the same molecular formula. That's true throughout all of these structural isomers, same molecular formula. It's going to have a different arrangement of the atoms, which is going to give us different functional groups. Example. Let's look at these two compounds. Okay. Look at them really close. Okay. First thing you do to determine if you have isomers is to figure out what the molecular formula is of each of them. That very first one, C2H6O. That's the molecular formula. It is, you see that hydroxyl group there, it's an alcohol. And in our second one, again, let's figure out the molecular formula, C2H6O. Same molecular formula, but they're clearly not the same compound. Our first one we said is an alcohol. This one here's got that oxygen right there, um, which is sandwiched between two carbon atoms. This is an ether. So, two um, functional isomers. Okay, so another type of structural isomer. They, um, these functional isomers are going to show different physical properties, melting point, boiling point. They're different compounds. And they're also going to have radically different chemical properties because we have two different functional groups. Remember we said functional groups are what uh, imparts chemical properties on organic molecules. So they're going to be different, all right? The chemical properties are going to be different because different functional groups. Alrighty, so there, that's our three different kinds of structural isomers, okay? And then let's just review our geometric uh, isomerism which we talked about in our very um, first part one of our chapter 11. Geometric isomers arise when atoms right, or groups are arranged differently in space because of that restricted rotation of a bond or, or bonds in the molecule. And the one that we looked at, it was the restricted rotation of a double bond. All right, so this is uh, where we saw it when we were talking about alkenes, right? We find the carbon, carbon, and incidentally, this is sometimes how we, uh, we draw things, okay? They leave out the carbons, and we just know that they're there because there's four bonds. So there's a carbon here and there, so that's a double bond. And in relation to that double bond, we see our methyl groups, right, up here, okay, are on the same side, the same face of that double bond. So that's cis-2-butene. We name it as we learned, okay. So that's cis-2-butene. And over here, we note, yes, it's still a 2-butene. There's our double bond, but our methyl groups are arranged differently, right, in space, all right, due to the, the fact that we have a face 
um, that's imparted in the molecule, a top and a bottom, so to speak, because of that double bond. And so this one is uh, opposite faces. So this is our trans 2 butene. All right, so what's going to be true with these? As we talked about before, they both have the same molecular formula, C4H8. All right, so from the molecular formula, we can't tell anything. Right, we need to look at um, the structure, right, the expanded structure in order to be able to tell what we have. And they're going to have different physical properties. They're two different compounds, two different names. Right, so different melting point, boiling point, density, etc. cetera. Uh, but how about chemical properties? We said that um, functional groups, right, impart different chemistry, different chemical properties on uh, organic compounds. Well, both of these have double bonds, right? So uh, double bonds, remember, they all undergo the same reactions. So their chemical uh, properties are going to be similar. All right, they're uh, going to undergo addition of hydrogen and addition of water, as we saw in our part one. All right, well, that is it. That wraps up our uh, part two video PowerPoint lecture for week 11. And uh, next week, we will continue on with our, our next chapter, which I believe is chapter 12. All right.